Okay, so let's go ahead and determine the distance between these two points on this ruler. So a lot of you out there are like, hmm, okay, how do I even read a ruler? And uh, you can't take this for granted. A lot of people, you know, actually maybe struggle reading rulers. You know, how many people use rulers on a daily basis? Well, you probably don't use a ruler, but I bet you have one of those like tape measures in your house. I know I have a bunch. And the cool thing about tape measures is when you need one, you can't locate one. At least that's me. That's why I have several tape measures here and there. And I'm like, where's the tape measure at? And I just can't find it when I need it. Uh, then, of course, when I don't need it, I know where my tape measure is at. And maybe you've, uh, you're like the same. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm the same way. Anyways, that's, you know, I digress, right? <laughs> but basically, you do use a tape measure all the time, okay? You probably don't even realize it. If you're, like, measuring, hey, I need a new desk in my room or, you know, does this piece of furniture, you know, fit in this location? We, you know, oftentimes, you know, we'll break out the tape measure. But the tape measure is effectively you know, just like a bunch of like rulers, right? So this is a ruler. Usually a ruler is like maybe one foot and they come at different lengths, uh, six inches, whatever the case might be. But, you know, the the marks on a ruler and a tape measure are effectively the same, okay? So what we want to do here is determine the distance between these, to these two locations on this ruler. So if you feel like you can figure this out, go ahead and pause the video and... Uh, you know, come up with your answer. I'm going to uh, show you how to do this, and we're going to uh, basically be doing a fraction problem. So that's everyone's favorite topic, you know, uh, measuring stuff and fractions. You're like, oh, you know what? That's my favorite stuff to do in the world is to do fraction problems involving measurements. Anyways, I know I'm being a little bit funny about this, but this is practical math. You need to know how to do this stuff. So we're going to get into this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabaclass Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, I know that's a bold statement, and of course I'll let you be the judge of that statement. You can check out my math uh, help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big courses like pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching my pre-calculus course here soon. But I have many, many specialty courses like um, uh, GED, Math Prep, uh, SAT, ACT Math. Um, maybe you're taking a teacher certification exam and you need uh, assistance with the math on that. Or the AccuPlacer, the CLEP exam. There's a ton of reasons why people study math outside of a math course. Okay, So maybe that's your situation. So you'll want to check out my full catalog of test preparation courses. Um, also, I do a lot with homeschoolers, independent learners, so I have a special system for those of you that need to homeschool. You might wanna check out my homeschool program. Um, also, uh, and obviously, I help people that are just in a regular math class, you know, like, hey, maybe you're taking pre-algebra and you're struggling, well, my program can help you out, okay? So if you want, you know, math help above and beyond, you know, uh, your current situation, I don't think you'll be able to find a better math program than mine. Now, one thing you need to be doing for yourself to get better in math is to take great notes. All right, this is kind of like my golden rule of math. I've been teaching uh, mathematics for decades, and basically, my um, philosophy—it's almost like a law of the universe—is those students who take great math notes, okay, almost always end up with fantastic math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who just don't like to take notes, they're not into taking notes. As a matter of fact, they're more into their cell phone and checking out their social media and doing their homework for their other class in math class. Listen, I was a student once, so I'm not picking on you, okay, because <laughs> I made all those mistakes. And thank goodness, is, thank goodness there wasn't uh, smartphones and cell phones around when I was going to school back in the 80s, all right, because I don't even think I would graduate. I'd be so distracted. I had enough distractions going on back then. Listen, okay, you have to remain focused to be successful in math, any level of math, doesn't make a difference. And note-taking is an activity that will help you remain focused. And not only focused, it's going to get that information into your comprehension, into your brain. It's not optional. You have to do this activity, and you have to get better at it, okay? So that's the only, no one's going to force you to do it, all right? But if you're serious about learning mathematics, all right, watching videos and stuff are helpful. But if you don't take great notes, if really concentrate on that, then you're going to just be kind of, 
you know, going you know, kind of sideways in your, your uh, improvement, okay? All right, so as you improve in your note-taking, you still need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, and algebra two and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Now, first of all, you need to be able to read this ruler, and hopefully the video is big enough. You can always expand uh, this video on your screen, but here is the location right here. Okay, so we're talking about this mark right there, and here, I'll just try to make that a little bit more pronounced, and this mark, all right, just so we're any confusion, that is what we're talking about, okay? All right, so just looking at this, you're saying, okay, well, how do I read this? Well, let's um, let's um, highlight this now. Okay, so here this is one inch, that's two inch, right? So we're starting with zero, one inch, two inch. We're not doing centimeters, that's on top. So one inch, two inch, three inch, and let's talk about uh, this center hash, okay, right there. That's a half, right? Or let's kind of go right here. That's a half inch, that's one half, okay? So this next hash is what? All right, so hopefully, so uh, most of you out there would be, well, it's half, it's one half of one half, okay? It's half of the half, so this is one quarter, all right? So if I was to take one half and divide it by two, that's the same thing as one half times one over two, okay? And if you need some assistance on multiplying and dividing fractions, I've got tons of videos on this in my pre-algebra playlist, but we have one fourth. But hopefully most of you out there are like, oh, okay, this is a quarter, that's a half. Right here is what? Well, that's an, an one quarter beyond one half. This is three fourths, okay? And then we add another one fourth to a three fourths, we have four fourths or one, okay? So this location here, you can kind of, you know, figure it out. So this is what? That's three and a half, that's one and one quarter. So if you are like, oh, okay, I know these locations. So now we have to find the distance, all right? We got to find the distance between the two. So you're going to want to take this uh, value and we're going to subtract away this value from that value, all right? So I'm kind of giving you some hints here uh, if you want to do this problem on your own. And if you think you could do it, certainly pause the video and, uh, you know, try it before you see me do it. So I'm going to show you kind of two ways we can approach this. Um, in terms of the math involved in it. And now let's get to it. All right, so as we discussed, this point here, all right, is one and one fourth. Okay, so that's one and one fourth. And let me make that a little bit better. One and one fourth. So that's the first um, thing that we need to be able to do to solve this problem is to be able to read the ruler correctly. All right, so this is one and one fourth, and this is three and one half. Okay, so. That's these two locations. So if I want to find the distance between uh, these two spots, well, I have to subtract, okay? I have to subtract the smaller number away from the bigger number. So it's going to look like this. If I did it, if I said one four subtracted from uh, three and one half, I'm going to end up with a negative number, okay? So it's this uh, uh, number right here, three and one half, and we want to take away one and one fourth. So this is the fraction problem. So if you are you know, feeling pretty good about fra your fraction skills and your fraction ability, go ahead and see, um, you know, what you can do with this problem, right? If you can answer this question, you will have the right answer. And in return, I will give you a happy face, an A plus and 100%, okay, which is always awesome to get on any math uh, work that you do. But let's get into it. So first of all, I have mixed numbers here, okay? So I'm gonna turn the mixed numbers, this is gonna be the first thing that we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn the mixed numbers into improper fractions. So how do I do that? Well, it's gonna be three times two, that's six, plus one, that will be seven halves, and then four times one is four, plus one is five fourths, okay? So uh, the first technique when you're dealing with mixed numbers is we can turn these guys into improper fractions, all right? So that's the first thing. And now I'm looking at the problem, I'm like, all right, seven halves minus five fourths. I need the LCD. I, what's the lowest common denominator? Because here I do not have the same denominator. So now I have to find the LCD. 
So what is the LCD? Yes, you guessed it. It is four. Now, um, if you're struggling with adding or subtracting fractions, I have tons of videos on this in my pre-algebra playlist to include how to find an LCD of fractions. All right, so the LCD is four, meaning that I want to rewrite this fraction here, uh, seven halves, with the lowest com common denominator of four. So how do I fix this fraction up to have a four down here? Well, I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by two, and I end up with uh, 14 over 4 minus 5 over 4. Now I have the same denominator, so I just simply have to subtract the numerators here. So 14 minus 5 is 9, so that's 9 fourths. Now, um, oftentimes in many of my uh, videos about fractions, I basically suggest to students, leave your fraction answers, okay, um, as improper, num uh, improper fractions, as long as they're fully simplified. But in this case, it's uh, of value to turn this improper fraction, this 9 fourths, into a mixed number. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I got to use my good old fashioned arithmetic division skills. Okay, so in other words, are you going to go ahead and take this is 9 divided by 4? Let's take 9 and divide it by 4. So this is 9 divided by 4. So 4 goes into 9 two times, right? So 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract 1, that's 1. So I can. Uh, that's my remainder, but I can write that as two and one fourth because this is, you know, gives us a readable value when it comes to this uh, ruler. Okay, so here this is two and one, oops, not one half, two and one fourth uh, distance. So if I started with one and one fourth and went out another two and one fourth, I should land at three and one half. Okay, all right, so that is the answer. And uh, this is uh, certainly, you know, we're practicing fractions or practicing reading rulers, but let's take a look at this fraction problem differently, okay? So some of you out there could be like, well, three and one half, okay? Well, this is the same as three plus a one half. That's what three and one half is. And we're going to take away one, all right, and a one fourth, okay? So we can write it this way, all right? So uh, we're going to be taking away this one inch and this one uh, quarter inch from three inches and a half inch. All right, kind of think of it in that manner. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just subtract these integer values, these nice whole numbers away from one another. So three will take away one inch, that's two inches, okay? And here I have my um, half inch and my quarter inch. So I'm gonna take away a quarter inch, a one fourth from a one half, okay? So to think about it, you know, from a ruler standpoint, so here's our, let's say this is one inch, this is one half, okay? If I'm going to take away one quarter, if I'm going to subtract one fourth from a one half, that's going to land me where? Okay, well, this is one half. I know this mark is one fourth, okay? This is one fourth, and this is one fourth, two one fourths, one fourth plus one fourth, is two fourths or one half. Okay, so being able to read a ruler uh, is actually helping you, you know, understand how to add and subtract fractions. Okay, so if you got like, okay, if I have a half inch and I take away a quarter inch, I still have a quarter inch left. And indeed, we do. So this is one half. Okay, we take away that one fourth from that one half. We're left with that one quarter. So we have two plus a one quarter or two and one fourth same as our other answer, okay? So this is another good way to think about this problem, but, you know, reading rulers and tape measures is very, very practical, okay? Not everything is going to be precisely, you know, like, you know, two inches, four inches, six inches, and I know a lot of us kind of estimate, but you got to be able to work with fractions. you got to be able to read a ruler. So I think I'll do some more problems in the future on rulers where we can get into, you know, uh, you know, working with the eighths, one eighth, uh, etc. And you, depending on what ruler you have, you can really, you know, fine tune it. But uh, this is a nice uh, start in terms of ruler reading and doing it, uh, some basic mathematics and fractions here. So hopefully you had a lot of fun with this problem. And if you enjoyed it, please consider smashing that like button. That certainly will help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, for 10 plus years at this uh, time. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos 
On My Child. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear, understandable way. My job is to keep you excited about learning mathematics. So uh, those are my uh, resources. But if you want my best help, uh, certainly check out uh, the links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics, uh, mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.